Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back. We finally finished our unit about American independence, and it was one of my favorite units. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But now we get to keep moving forward in our American history, and we're going to learn about our next unit, which is called Frontier Explorers. Now, this is all about us expanding into the West, because if you remember correctly, we talked about how the 13 colonies were established in the last unit, but look how small of a space that is. We had all the rest of this grain to discover still, which is the United States today, but we hadn't moved into any of this territory yet. So now this next unit is all about us exploring what we call the West, because if we remember our, um, our directions on a map, we have never eat, no, this way, sorry, never eat soggy waffles. You guys say soggy waffles, I say soggy worms. <laughs> never eat soggy waffles. Waffles is over here, W for the West. So we're moving westwards to expand into the nation to figure out what else is there, what kind of land exists. So that's what our story is all about today. We learned in the first kind of introduction story yesterday, they just reviewed with you that we became our own independent nation and we had established the 13 colonies. And so then we also learned that there was this really important guy who's gonna kick off our story and his name was Daniel Boone. So here's my drawing of Daniel Boone for today. He was a great hunter and woodsman, which means he was really good at working in the woods and um, uh, keeping alive. He was good at hunting. He was good at living in the woods, building things with his hands. He was really good at all those different things. So Daniel Boone from an early age had all these really great skills that were able to help him get to explore the West. And he was really one of the first people that explores the West. So we learn in the beginning of the story that the thing that's standing in his way from exploring the West is these mountain ranges called the Appalachian Mountains. Now they're not on here, but I'm just gonna show you, they cross down along here. There's these huge mountain ranges, just like in Colorado. In Colorado, we have the Rocky Mountains. When we look over to the West, we see that huge mountain range. It's almost exactly the same, just as beautiful, but it's over here on the East side and it is blocking the way to just be able to walk straight across. And you have to remember, this is back in the day before airplanes were invented. So Daniel Boone couldn't just get on an airplane and go, I'm gonna fly over the mountains to see what's on the other side. They had to walk or ride horses everywhere they went or get in a wagon, okay? So there's this big, big mountain range called the Appalachian Mountains, kind of looks like this, that's standing in the way of knowing what's on the other side of it. How can we expand our territories? So also we need to remember that uh, Daniel Boone learned a lot of his skills from the Native Americans. The Native Americans taught him a lot of different hunting skills and a lot about the nature and the land around them because remember they were already living there. So he comes across his friend, John Finley, who goes, I know how to cross that mountain range. I've done it before. There's this place called the Cumberland Pass. And it's literally a little path that's been kind of eroded away in the mountains from water rushing through that the Native Americans use all the time to cross over the mountains to the other side. So Daniel Boone goes, that sounds exciting, Mr. Finley. Let's go on an adventure together. And so they do, they pack up all their stuff, they get on their horses, and they decide to go through the Cumberland Gap across the mountains. Now, when they get to the other side, they are just amazed because it's gorgeous. And if you've ever been to like, we would call them the Midwestern states now, but it was considered the West at this point because we hadn't explored that far to the West. Um, if you've ever been to these states like in Iowa or Nebraska, or in this case, it was Kentucky, it's very beautiful. Lots of lush green grass and everything looked really fertile and ready to grow crops. And there were a lot of buffalo everywhere. So they were really excited because they were like, oh, we can hunt here. We can start growing crops. We can create a whole new civilization over on this other side of the mountains. So he and his friend, Daniel Boone and John Finley, stay there for about two years before they decide to come back over the mountains to North Carolina. Now, when they come back over the mountains, there are some people who go, well, we heard that you were able to um, get through the Cumberland Gap and get over, we'd like to go too. We'd like to create a new settlement and we'd like to start in a new land with new um, opportunities. So he warns them that it's a 
very hard trip to make, but they still want to go. So basically, Daniel Boone takes a whole bunch of people in his own family, and they go up to the Cumberland Gap again, and they go over the mountains to go live in Kentucky. Now, they were only there for a short time before the, um, the, the people that he took with them decided they weren't really cut out for this lifestyle because it's a hard way of living. You have to remember there's not really any, um, there's, there's no showers like we have. There's no, uh, just cooking like we have. We don't have stoves. They cooked over a campfire and pots and whatnot. You have to remember that they're walking these long distances. It's a hard way of living. It's nothing like what we're used to these days. So a lot of the people decided this was really hard and there was no establishments yet. There were no stores, there were no houses built. Everything was just open land and it was up to them to start creating settlements there. So a lot of people ended up going back to North Carolina since we already had the colonies set up over there and there were already these stores and these houses and whatnot that were built in a community built. They were moving to the other side of the Appalachian Mountains. If you went over there, there wasn't any of that. So you were kind of starting brand new. So it depends on how you look at it. One way it's an exciting adventure, but it's also very hard. And that's what Daniel Boone tried to warn everyone about. So then it turns out though, you give it a little bit of time, a lot more people wanted to move over. So a businessman actually came to Daniel Boone and he said, I would like to put you in charge of trailblazing, creating a trail that we can actually take wagons on that's wide enough for us to actually um, trek through to get to the other side of the mountains and start bringing whole groups of people. So Daniel Boone got to be one of the first trailblazers because he was the best at this kind of stuff. And they made a much wider trail than like we saw on this side. See, it was really thin. It was very bumpy. It was still part of the um, land itself, but they actually cleared away trees and they worked through the snow and the mud and the rain. He took some uh, friends with him and they created their own path, even building little bridges over streams and creeks that was called the Wilderness Road. It had a different name at first that the Native Americans had given it, but it changed to the Wilderness Road when Daniel Boone and his men started working on it. And they widened the trails that the Native Americans used in order to create a path for all these people on the other side of the mountains to start moving and creating settlements on the west side of the Appalachian Mountains. And so now you get a flood of people that start moving and coming over and creating these settlements, setting up stores and the things you need in the town. And um, while they're over there, even Daniel Boone gets to make his own fort. And I wish I had a picture of it, but it was called Fort Boonesboro. It was named after him in the city. And even Daniel Boone was a little disappointed at this point because there were so many people flooding in, it kind of lost that spectacular newness where it was peaceful and out in the countryside because so many people flooded in. But he loved being a trailblazer and he loved being a woodsman and enjoying all his time out there. So really the important part that we take away from this story today is that we're learning that Daniel Boone was one of the first explorers to teach us we could go over the Appalachian Mountains, that big mountain range, to get over to the west to start seeing what was in the west and we're not even that far west yet when we talk about kentucky i mean it's not perfect because it's not on here but it's around here in this area so we haven't even gotten clear over here remember colorado is way over here so we don't even get to colorado till probably years later i'll look that up for you guys but that's our first story today, and we're going to learn how we keep moving into the West, what kind of fun adventures they go on, what kind of dangers that present themselves, and how we became the 50 states of this nation.